Welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video we'll be studying oxidation numbers. Now an oxidation number is the charge assigned to an atom of a molecule or an ion. Now oxidation number deals with a lot of rules and in this video we've discussed the rules over here. The very first rule is that the oxidation number of all elements in the free state is zero. Let's consider a free state element. A free state element is basically a chemical element that is not combined with any other element. Examples are we have lithium, carbon, that is oxygen, sorry, carbon and nitrogen. Now, as you can see, all these elements are in their own combined form, and hence we say they are in their natural form. Therefore, they have an oxidation number of zero. Great. Now, rule two. The oxidation number of a monoatomic ion equals the charge of the ion. Now, basically, when we talk about a monoatomic ion, is an ion that consists of a single atom in there. Look at these ones. In H+, you realize that it has only hydrogen, H, as the only atom over there. Same applies to Al3+. Plus. We have Al as the only atom over there, and O2- minus has only O as the only atom over there. Per our rule, the oxidation number of H+, plus will be plus 1. That of Al3+, plus would be plus 3. That of O2 minus will be minus 2, respectively, in that order. Now, rule number 3. The oxidation number of group 1 element in a compound is plus 1. Take a look at this periodic table. The group 1 elements have been demarcated by the sign over there and displays, displayed on the screen as well. Now, all those elements over there have oxidation numbers of plus 1, respectively in the compound form so as you can see they've been demarcated very well for you to get the whole juice of the group one element good now the fourth law the oxidation number of a group two element is plus two now in the periodic table group two elements have been demarcated by the arrow down there and it's displayed on the screen as well now group two elements are the ones there and they all have an oxidation number of plus two in the compound form anywhere you find them five now hydrogen always has plus one in non-metals and negative one in metals consider these compounds hcl cah2 now in hcl you realize that cl is a non-metal Hence, the oxidation number of hydrogen would be plus 1. And CaH2, Ca is a metal. And hence, the oxidation number of hydrogen would be negative 1. Good. Now, take a look at this. Oxygen is always negative 2 in compounds, except in peroxide, where it's negative 1. Now, Let's take a look at what peroxides are. Basically, peroxides consist of two oxygen atoms, or as in this form of ion. So whenever I see an ion of this sort, O2, 2 minus, that is how a peroxide actually looks like. So when this oxygen atom bonds to compounds, that is when a peroxide is formed. So common examples of peroxides are we have the NH2O2, the Na2O2. Yes. So anytime you see compounds of this sort, you realize that you apply the last concept where the oxidation number of oxygen becomes what? Negative 1. So always oxygen is negative 2. But in peroxides, it changes. 7. Fluorine is negative 1. Always negative 1. Now, when you apply all the rules we've listed before, and you realize that none of them plays a role in your calculation use this great rules that i'm sharing with you realize that the oxidation number of group 17 that is where you can see them the flowing from fluorine they are all negative one 
there's an exception to that but the exception is limited when it comes to the point where you apply the initial rules and they end working properly so you realize a negative one now for group number 15 they also have an oxidation number of negative three now let's look at this crucial rule this is one of the rules that we'll be elaborating on the most he says that the sum of oxidation number of a neutral compound is zero so look at the highlighted words of a neutral compound now what's a neutral compound basically a neutral compound is a compound that has no charge look at mgo over there and so32 minus over there you realize that mgo has no charge on it either positive or negative but for so3 the charge compound it has negative two as the charge so whenever you see a compound without a charge the compound is a neutral compound and hence mgo is validated as a neutral compound pause and look at this nacl mno42 minus co2 h2s CRO4 minus NH4 plus. Yes, pause and look at this. Now take your pen and kindly cross out the ones that are neutral compound. Yeah, I believe you are done. Now let's 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 cross check. The neutral compounds are NaCl, CO2, and H2S. Yes. You realize that all those compounds listed here have no charge on them. So the ones that have charges are the charged ones and they aren't neutral so you realize that mno 42 minus will be a charged compound but not a neutral compound the same applies to cro4 minus and that of nh4 plus great so let's do some calculation with that particular law now consider this compound h2s in calculating for the oxidation number of h2s we add two atoms of hydrogen to a single atom of sulfur because in the compound the number of hydrogen atoms are two so we end up getting this now it is equated to zero because this compound is a neutral compound that is why when we added the 2h plus the s we added zero now don't forget this law that says that the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one in metals and hence we we'll assign hydrogen over here with plus one so by substituting this we end up getting two into bracket one plus s is equal to zero further solving this is what we get finally s becomes a negative two great let's move to the final law that says that the sum of oxidation numbers of a polyatomic ion is equal to the charge of the ion Unlike a monoatomic ion where it consists of one atom, a polyatomic ion consists of more than one atoms in there. So watch this. We have MnO2, SO3, 2 minus, and CO4, 2 minus, and there's one last one, NH4 plus. They are all polyatomic. As you can see, they have two different what, atoms in there. And they are ions because they have charges positive and negative charges you can see them yes so let's do some calculation with this particular law and let's see how best we can end let's consider this so42 minus in calculating for the oxidation number of this particular compound it would be the addition of the sulfur over there plus four atoms of the oxygen we can see there and equal to negative two it is negative two because this is a polyatomic ion and it's a compound as well and the law says that anytime we sum all the oxidation number of the respective elements in there we equate it to the charge on the polyatomic ion now oxygen has been multiplied by four because it has four atoms over there so but before we proceed do not forget about this law that says that the oxidation number of oxygen is negative two in all compounds the only exception is to peroxide but this compound isn't a peroxide so you are free to move so by substituting you realize that the oxidation number of o here or oxygen will be minus two 
to our substitution, we get something like this. S plus 4 into bracket negative 2 is equal to negative 2. Good. So, further solving and making S the subject, we get the oxidation number of the element S to be plus 6. Congratulations for completing your tags on oxidation numbers. We've displayed some questions below the description with answers. You can solve them using the same rules. If you are a bit confused, you can get it back to the rules and I believe you will be fine. Hope to see you next time. Bye.